Okay, kids, I have a video I like to make quick. Every now and then I get questions about what crimping tools I like, and it took me a long time to try and amass all of these until I found things I like. I have, this whole thing is just wiring and pinouts and connectors, the whole toolbox. So I just wire stuff here. You probably recognize this or this guy if you've seen any of my harnesses, connectors, or whatever. So this is in my top drawer of things I use most often. Notice it's empty because it's all here. So I guess we'll start off with the strippers and then more combination stuff. So these, obviously you don't crimp or cut with these. They're total garbage for that. And if you guys have one of those combination crimper cutter things, throw it in the trash, please, because they don't crimp or cut anything. Moving on. I like these for cutting sheathed wire. So if you have wire like this, where it's in a sheath, and it's multiples, it'll just take the PVC jacket clean off without cutting into the wires. It's incredible. This is good for medium sized wires. I just find it's nice to use because it has a stop. It's light and it just bloop. You can crimp like eight wires in a row. Sometimes if you're really lucky, like that other wire I showed, if there's four wires, you can take the jacket off, move it back and take four wires stripped. Another one I used to like was this one, and also this will do many wires at once, but I'm noticing it pinches. It puts a dent or almost a second cut after the crimp or when you go down the wire. So I have mostly stopped using these. I'm probably going to retire them to the not used much drawer. And then always something like this is very nice if you're struggling with one of these crimpers. You can use these guys, good old Pittsburgh. A lot, you know, when you're cutting stuff or doing whatever, they're, they're nice to have. And then these are even nicer ones, obviously. Milwaukee, you don't need these either, but nice to have. Very strong cutters angled in on each other. And then this guy is extremely nice. I think I've shown these off many times. I have two versions of this. I have a backup version. So... This is for crimping uninsulated connectors. And let me tell you what, when you get used to these guys, you can crimp the tiniest wire and then you can get pre-cut shrinky boys and you can crimp two wires together and shrink it and it's almost the same diameter as the wire you started with. You should also have decent side cutters. They are incredible if you've never used them. Obviously you shouldn't cut big wire with this. You'll snap the jaws clean off. Ask me how I know. Also, you know, stubby needle boys for doing stuff and then super needle boys. And then I also have even smaller little needle boys. So obviously these are for yanking on stuff. These are big guys. And then these are for more finite stuff. And moving on to this guy. These are things I really like. I've really grown to like these. Because I hated doing one crimp and then another crimp on these Metropac 150 style. So this is like for an alternator plug. A lot of GM stuff is this Metropac 150. So you might not recognize that one. But let me... Yeah, like these style connectors and then they have the the pin and then the receiver so the holly stuff uses all of those most gm connectors map sensors everything are metropac 150 and what you can do is let me set you down for a second hopefully i don't make you sick i think you guys will be all right so you can place the connector in here let me give you a background you can place the connector already in there and it'll crimp the small side and the large side. So if you strip the wire or shove the weather pack or the weather seal, the waterproof seal on this with the wire, you shove the seal in there too and the wire through there and it'll crimp 
all of it at once. And then if that's not tight enough, you keep moving down and it'll go all the way down to the 24 gauge. And then here, when you're like, man, I have pins that are smaller than that, dude. Uh, Matt, what do I do? So here's a Tyco connector. This is like the Holly ECU plug, also for Hall Tech and a bunch of other things. So this is too small. You won't totally crimp this guy. It's not gonna work. So these are the smaller version of the same thing. So take a look at that. They go from 1.5, 1.0, half a mil and a quarter millimeter, I believe that's what that is. So same exact thing. It'll crimp the jacket for a strain relief and there's no real weather pack on these guys, no seal because the connector itself, sorry, whoo, has the rubber seal in it. And it's such a tight fit on the pin that it seals itself. Also, it crimps, these are DTM, so the smaller DT connectors. I buy the open-end ones because the barrel ones are extremely expensive and in bulk, they're, they're not much better. So getting them in this these rows, much, much cheaper. No, no problem with them. It's faster to use the barrels, but it's like double the price. So, also, talking about DTs, I have a bunch of these guys. I can give you guys all the part numbers. So you drop the barrel in there and you crimp them. So this is the, what is this? This is a medium size. So what we're gonna do is small, medium, large. So these are the small guys. You can see contact size 20. You can see that's a pretty small hole and that crimps all four sides. And these work amazing, these Rhino tools. And then I have one for this, which is 14, 16, 18. So this is DTM, which is what I call DT mini. This is DT connector. So that's medium DT, just regular DT. And this is what's called DTP, which I call DT plus. And yeah, you can see that that's for a 12 gauge and you know, 10 or uh, 10 or 12. So this is what I use for like fan and fuel pump. I might have one to show you. Uh, yeah, it's these, see how big these pins are? So these are good for fans and fuel pumps. You can get four. Yeah, so these are flex fuel connectors. So you'd use the minis for these. See how small the pins are? And then what else do we got? Mm, so these guys use the mini crimps. And then, yeah, so these are all DTM in this drawer and I have barrels, DTMs. What I wanna show you about a barrel connector is if you guys haven't experienced that, is check this out. There's no, there's no little, uh, so that's the difference. And you just shove it in there, shove the wire in and go, uh, and it's done. You don't have to align anything. You don't have to do anything crazy. If it's your personal car and you don't mind spending more money and wanna wire it much faster, you know, the, the closed barrel are pretty awesome. But when you're buying this many, it's cheaper to get the open barrel. So I wanted to show all of those off, uh, you know, persecute me in the crucify me, all of the above in the comments for links to these. Sometimes it's Amazon, so sometimes the links change and the tools change slightly. So I bought all these Rhino ones and then I couldn't find a Rhino DTP. So this one is a IWIS, but I've had a bunch of the IWIS stuff and it's fantastic. It's very good. And last, if you guys don't have one of these, these are incredible. So if you have incredible, geez, my mouth. If you have one of these, you know how destructive it is. So you can crimp the hell out of something with these. They will, if you're not careful, it'll destroy the connector and cut the wire if you're putting too much hand into this thing. But these are fantastic when you have something that this guy won't do or whatever. Yeah, this will smash the hell out of something. So good to have, definitely good to have. And I believe that's about it. Wow, I'm almost right at 10 minutes. It's like I'm an algorithm nerd, but I see 9.55 here, so we'll go 10.01.
But yeah, there is the crimpy boys that I use almost every day. Okay, thanks. Bye.